everyone, Trisha here at Club Scrap with another page kit tutorial. This one is Club Scrap's beautiful confetti collection. I love the bright, cheerful colors. We will be um, taking some papers and embellishments that are all included in the kit, and we'll do some creative trimming, and we will be able to assemble eight beautiful, festive scrapbook pages with this collection, which I have right here. I've got my trimmer ready, my accordion pocket file, and instructions, so you'll want to do the same. If you don't yet have this accordion pocket file, can't recommend it enough. It's something that you make yourself with my help. I was here to help. So we're going to start by taking these photo mats and filing them into the pocket that represents which layout they're going to end up on. So let's take the three pink photo mats and all three of them will go into pocket one and two. Then the three blue mats and one yellow mat. Add those to pocket for layout three and four. Next, take three aqua photo mats and put those in the pocket for layouts five and six. And finally, two yellow photo mats will go in pockets seven and eight. The next thing I like to do is put the paper in the order that we'll be using it. And your paper might start out in a different order as mine if that's the case. Don't worry about it. We're just going to grab our stack and we'll sort through it together. The first piece we will be using though will be one of these large dot prints. So let's, I'm going to just pull that from my stack and put it face down on my trimmer. Next we're going to be using one of these small dot prints. It's so pretty. And then I dig a little deeper in the stack to find one aqua plane and one pink plane. Then perhaps at the back of the pile, you might find some of these long cut apart images. Um, go ahead and grab the, the strips followed by the other cut apart. Uh, it's just one of these and then that will go face down on our trimmer base as well. Then I'm going to have you grab this gorgeous piece of Renea foil. This is a German made product. It's basically a really thin piece of paper with foil laminated on both sides. So it's it's a very, very cool thing. We'll, we'll make some fun stuff with this, but we do need to do some trimming before we start with those cute projects. Then we're going to go back to the paper. Let's take one, the other large dot print, put that on the stack and then a pink plane. Then two of these beautiful blue planes. Such a gorgeous, vibrant color for this collection. Then two yellow planes, one, two. Finally, one of the small dot prints and then the other aqua plane. All right, just gonna flip that all back over and we'll begin right at the top with this adorable print. Let's place that dot print into the trimmer with the larger dots at the top and simply cut at seven inches. Take both of the pieces you just created and put them in pocket three and four. Then take the small dot print. Now this one, it doesn't really matter the orientation. It's, it's all the same. So let's place this in the trimmer and cut it nine and a half and six. Rotate the six inch piece and cut it horizontally at eight and four. Two of these 4x6s that we just made will be filed in pockets 1 and 2, and the other in pocket 5 and 6. These next two narrow strips remain as they are and are filed in 5 and 6. Now let's take our aqua plane. We're going to make some paper ribbons. Those are just quarter inch strips. So our first number will be very large at 11 and 3 quarters, and then 11 and a half. Ten and a half, so that's going to make a one inch strip. So a ten and a half, nine and a quarter, and five. Rotate this five inch strip. We'll cut at eleven and a quarter, seven and a half, and three and three quarters. Now take these three rectangles that are all the same size and put them in pocket one and two. If you would like, right now wouldn't even be a bad time to grab scissors, and I'm going to take this tiny little piece that's left over and cut a small V into the end. Just take out a little V to make a little banner. It would be so cute. This guy goes in one and two. Then you've got another longer strip. This is four and a quarter by 12. Let's cut this horizontally at nine and three quarters, six 
six and a half, three and a quarter. Take one of these rectangles and put it in pocket five and six. The next two in seven and eight. Then there's this narrow one that goes in pocket one and two. Now we have some strips. There are two larger strips. They're not the same size, but they're both larger. Those go in pocket five and six. And then we have the two really skinny guys. Put those in seven and eight. So far, the only scraps that we have are right here. <laughs> Oh, my favorite. Okay, so moving on to the pink plane, which is next in our stack. I always make sure you just have one sheet before you start cutting. Not that I know anything about that. 11 and 3 quarters. 11 and a half. 11 and a quarter. And then 10 and a quarter. And 5 and a half. Let's rotate and cut at eight and four. Stack up two of these rectangles that are the same size, pocket three and four, and the other rectangle in seven and eight. Pick up the next strip. We're gonna cut at, horizontally of course, 11 and three quarters, 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, and three and three quarters. Gather up all three rectangles that are the same size and put those in seven and eight. And then you've got two really skinny guys left. Take the larger of the two. You can go ahead and put a little V into the end of this one. And place that in pocket one and two. This is a scrap, I'm sorry to say, as are our little triangle pieces. Okay, so now we are reaching the cut aparts already. Oh, we have some more filing to do. My apologies, that happens all the time. You have one wide strip, and you've got to cut three skinny ones. So take one wide, two skinny, put them in pocket three and four. And the other really little guy, one and two. Now let's trim our cut aparts. I'm going to turn to the first page of our instructions, and that's where you're going to find out where each piece goes. But since I'm doing this with you, you don't need to worry about that right now. I'm cutting at 11. There's my little scrap. And then 10 and a quarter. Also, I'm following the registration marks that are located right in between each piece that needs to be trimmed. Then we're sliding down to nine and a half. Just always make sure they line up with the blade. Then eight and a half. Let's see. Six and a half. And four. So what I like to do here is pick up the entire stack from the table, leaving it in its original landing order, and it's much easier to file from the hand than it is from the table. This larger cut apart goes in pocket one and two. The multiple dots, seven and eight. Kindness is always beautiful, one and two. Little pink little mini dots, one and two. The blue strip, three and four. I don't care how old I am, I'm going in the bouncy castle. That's five and six. And this last pink strip, one and two. I'll take the next sheet of cut aparts, place it into the trimmer so that throw confetti is on the, up, on the right side here. And once again, we'll cut at 11. <laughs> Then eight and a half. And the last vertical cut here is at five. Rotate so this large tag is on the left. And we'll cut at eight. This really large tag goes in pocket seven and eight. And then pick up the piece with the cake. Cake goes on the left and we'll cut at three inches. File this in five and six and this other little mini tag in pocket one and two. This next strip has some journaling prompts on it. Make sure those are on the far right, and we will cut at 10, and eight, five and a half. Take this uh, never underestimate image that goes in three and four. The oval, seven and eight. Sparkle, one and two and the gifts with journaling three and four. 
Place the next strip in with the teal cut apart on the far right. We'll make our first cut was at 11, and then 10, 8. That's, well, that's not really it. This is, this is the uh, benefit of watching this on video. What I did next is just trim this, oh, I don't know, if you want to cut it at four and three quarters, so that you're just literally trimming off this, the Lord B here, but four and three quarters seems to be. Now, we've got this portion of our cut apart is going to go in pocket three and four, and then the text portion, put it in seven and eight. Then we have uh, some stars with journaling, five and six. The blue, in my defense, I was left unsupervised, five and six, and the, the aqua, one and two. Now we have this gold foil. Oh, I missed I missed an arrow strip again. This one goes in five and six. Now grab this Renea foil. Again, it's gold on one side, pink on the other, with uh, paper in between that makes this real malleable. You can like form it into a shape and it will hold its shape, which we'll be doing a little bit later. You see how it stays? It's really a cool product. Um, all right, we're going to cut this vertically at five and three quarters. We're going to make some strips here, five and three quarters. <laughs> five and a half. So I'm just going to go ahead and file as we go so we don't get too complicated here. So these two really narrow strips, put those in pocket five and six. Careful with those. And then we're going to continue on. We'll cut at five and a quarter and five. These two strips will be placed in pocket one and two. Now we're gonna cut at four and a half, so it's a slightly larger strip, and four. These two half inch strips will be used gold side up in pocket seven and eight. Now let's rotate what remains of this piece, which is a four by 12, and we'll cut at 10 and a half. Nine, seven, and five. And you can see how uh, well and easily this foil paper cut. Um, we're going to set aside this um, rectangular piece. And now we have two different sizes of rectangles left. The larger size, these are two by four right now. We're going to cut both of them at the same time horizontally at two inches. And we're going to, um, we can probably set these aside because we have more things we will need to do with them to prepare them for the pages. The other two we're going to cut into squares as well. We're going to stack them and cut them horizontally at three. And if it's too difficult, you can certainly do them one at a time. Sometimes it helps to go at the midpoint. And we're going to cut at one and a half. And you can set aside these smaller squares as well. We are going to be making some adorable pinwheels out of these and mini envelopes out of these, some die cutting out of this. So what I'm trying to do is like help you experience the fun and versatility of the Renea foil all in a set of eight pages with a six by 12 inch sheet, which is a common way that this paper can be acquired. Okay, I think that finishes up all of the trimming, so let's get ready to work with our foil. After clearing out my trimmer, I've got the club scrap cutting mat and a grid ruler on hand. I've also just taken just a scrap of paper and trimmed it to uh, one by one and a half. And what we're going to do is just make some miniature envelopes out of these two inch squares. And the fun part is that um, this is true of really making an envelope out for any size card, and this is a fun way to do it. If you want to start out by placing the um, foil, you choose whether the gold side is up or the pink side is up, depending on what you want on the outside of your envelope. So this will be gold on the ins well, gold on the inside. We'll go with that. Now, because I have it positioned in this 45 degree angle spot, um, my goal then is to p temporarily place this uh, pink one by one and a half inch piece of paper in the center so that it's level. And a great way to make sure it's level is to use the same angle on my grid ruler. If I just place it in here and make sure that the paper and the ruler are level, that way I know I have everything at a nice 
perfect angle. To me, this is just a super easy and inexpensive way to do this. So now I'm folding up the bottom portion. You can see how the foil just stays put, but I'm going to open it back up again. Then fold down from the top. Open, then fold in from the sides. So I'm going to undo that and remove my temporary, temporary uh, little piece of paper. Then with scissors, come in. We're going to make some tiny little tri triangles. Just cut along each corner along the folded line to remove those corners. Sweetness. <laughs> so at this point, you tuck, you put it back again so it's horizontal tuck in the sides and bring up the bottom. Now to me the fun part is just allowing this to remain open so if you're using it as a sweet embellishment on a scrapbook page um, then you can um, insert something cute into that if you would like. And I'm just going to take a tiny little dab of glue and bring that back up there and whoop, clear that right off. So you'll continue and make the envelopes in the same manner, and I'm, I'll just set this aside to dry under something a little heavier. And for my next one, maybe I'll start up with the envelope pink side up and alternate them as I go so that I have two of each, and that's what I did. If you prefer one side or the other being exposed, you, of course, uh, go your own way with this, or if you don't want to make envelopes at all, don't worry about that either. All right, so you'll you'll finish this up. I will do this off camera, but before we move on, I'm going to uh, show you how to make a pinwheel, and the same is true here where you need to um, choose you can alternate which side faces up. And I've got a real simple way to do this. So imagine there's a straight line running from here to here. I'm eyeballing this, but putting my scissors right at the corner, go toward the center, but not to the center. So I'm going toward that corner on the diagonal. I'll do that coming in from each corner. Now there are all kinds of tutorials out there where you measure and do all this stuff. I don't bother with any of that. Okay, so now I have them almost ready to make my pinwheel. If you happen to have a little brad, this can really help, even though the paper does happily stay where you put it. And I, I used a stylus just to kind of help form this, but I'm going to take one of the corners and just bring it to the center. And then use my stylus to help kind of make a round shape there at the end. That's one flap of the pinwheel. Then I'll take the next corner and bring that in. And again, I'll use my stylus or my pokey tool <laughs> if you want. And you can just make sure you're going to, to the center so that you have something to put your bread into. Okay, so now I'm kind of kind of centered up there. Doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Then I'll place all this on a cork board and use the same pokey tool I was using to just poke a hole in the center. Now it doesn't matter if you've gone through each petal on the pinwheel, as long as the top of the brad is large enough to sort of secure everything into place. And then just split those prongs at the back. And I have an adorable little pinwheel embellishment made with the Renea foil. It's so sweet. Now this next one, so this one I started, I think I had the gold side facing up. And so these, this area is pink. And the other one, I'll start out with the pink side facing up. So the little flaps are going to be gold and you can alternate those as well. And go ahead and make three more pinwheels in the same way. Okay, so now after all that, I have two gold Renea foil envelopes and two pink ones. And I have four pinwheels. I've got some tiny little triangular <laughs> scraps, which I'll get rid of. And I do have the two other little scraps. So if you wanted to make squares and make more pinwheels or whatever, you can certainly do that. I'm sure you could find a home for these bad boys. And then after all of that, I still had a sheet, a portion of a sheet left. And I it, this die cuts beautifully. It embosses beautifully. Um, we actually have included a sheet um, in the card kit as well in a different color. Of course, it comes in tons of different colors and also in uh, pre-embossed uh, um, styles. But I had some old punches laying around. So if you just, it kind of goes well with the confetti concept, you can go ahead and punch. I'm going to do it facing down actually 
so that the punch falls out and I can get some manpower behind it. Girl power. <laughs> okay, so I have two larger circles. And then I think I'll go in with, so I started with the largest circles first. And I think a lot of people already own various circle punches. Um, we've had these before we had our, our die cutting machines. And then I have this size. I have several sizes. It's kind of handy. At this point, maybe I'll just switch to the small guy. And I can get a lot of really fun little confettis. I mean, you can just, it, it just goes and goes. So if this is one of the things you want to try, or I've worked it into the confetti pages is what I'm saying. So there's my little custom foil, really super sweet confetti. And um, I'm sure with the circles too, there are tons of other little origami shapes you can make with the foil as well. But for now, we're going to be using these on layouts. I believe it's seven and eight, maybe even a few on three and four. I can't remember right now. Really fun to use for that too. <laughs> it's kind of cute. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up my area, and we are going to get started with layout eight first. You can find now I've started by taking everything out of pockets seven and eight, which leads me to this uh, sweet little tag here. Um, what I'd like to do is literally turn it into a tag. So to use to do that, I'm going to take my grid ruler, and that first uh, dashed line on the grid ruler, I'm going to line that up with the aqua line on the tag push firmly and then remove that triangular shape from the corner. You could also do this with scissors, but I just kind of think this, because of the length of that line, I want to make sure it's equidistant to the rest of the perimeter and this is the best way to do it. Finally, I'm going to turn the tag upside down and take the zero center of my grid ruler and then find the center of my tag. So I just kind of keep fiddling until I can see that the dimensions on both ends line up and I'm about a half an inch from the edge and about one and a quarter from the top point of this tag here. And then I'll take a pencil and just make a little mark where that center mark is. I, I always do a T shape so I can line it up into the center of my crocodile punch. So here's my punch on the largest setting. I'll go ahead and add a circle to that tag, punch out at the top and, um, you could also put an eyelid into that spot if you wish. And I'm going to go ahead and point out that there is another tag in pocket one and two. And as long as we have all this stuff out, we can do the exact same thing. So I'll cut my corners at an angle using that dotted line as my guide. I'll find the center. And I'm about a quarter of an inch from the edge, like my little T. Still using the larger hole on my crocodile, I'll punch a hole into this as well. And now this is ready to go. I'll file this again in pocket one and two. So if I turn to the last page of my instructions and look at layouts seven and eight, the very last image, the right side of the double page spread, the base of that is this large dot print. And so we're going to start there so that we can stack our pages up from from top to bottom or bottom to top. I don't know from eight to one. <laughs> okay. So looking at my pink uh, mats, I've got three mats. I'm going to line up into the, onto the left edge, kind of with equal spacing all the way around and then take one of the foil strips and place it vertically right next to those mats. And then using book binding glue, you can put a thin line of glue onto the aqua color and then you can center it on there and adhere. And what I've noticed about the foil is that it takes the glue really, really well. You'll have a good, good experience with that if you're, if you're careful. And then here is one of those adorable little bags and you'll notice that this large cut apart fits perfectly right into the bag. So it's kind of that fun interactive aspect of being able to pull it out to kind of see a picture or whatever you decide to put in there. If you'd rather not do that part, you can just simply put this on top of the bag, but I was able to get some more real estate out of the page by putting this other pink mat into that spot and then the oval shaped cut apart on top of that. Now, if you're in the mood, you can certainly take scissors and just cut around that oval shape to create um, a nice look there. And then while you're at it, just grab a few of your little foil 
confetti pieces. You can you what's nice is you can use them either gold side up, which really matches well with the bag we've included, or the pink side up, whichever one you prefer. And I also incorporated some of the the ribbon, uh, this organza ribbon around the bag, and then added some pink ribbon to the top of the tag. I'm going to show you that on the finished page so you can get a better idea of how this all turned out. So here's my ribbon topped tag here, and this goes all the way around the envelope and um, or the bag, whatever you want to call it. And here's my um, my cut apart. Now what I was really aware of here is the ability to add the picture behind all of this. So there's no adhesive on the right side of this tag. Anything overlapping the mat, I have completely avoided adding the adhesive to that spot. And of course you can pull this out by the by the ribbon and I did reinforce this with a white eyelet. And that is page eight. Now I'm gonna take the pink 12 by 12 that should be next in your stack of um, papers that we've sorted in advance. And across the top we'll add this really sweet little cut apart followed by a nice area separator. We got that gold foil. We'll just kind of match what's happening on layout eight by nesting the aqua on top of that. Now the, the right edge, I'm sorry, the left edge of this will align flush with the left edge. Before you do that, if you'd like, you can take scissors and just cut a gentle curve into this a little adhesive on my scissors. That's never happened to you, I don't think, but. <laughs> so this is actually the right edge of a cut apart going on the left edge of the page. And then I should have another yellow mat. It landed in the wrong pocket. Okay, then we've got two aqua mats up here balancing things out over there. And of course you can finish that up by adding a few fun gold or fuchsia confetti, <laughs> homemade confetti. Oh, it just kind of add, it just adds a really nice touch to this. And then use the rest of the organza ribbon to tie a bow around the left edge of this page. Here is the finished sample with all of the confetti pieces attached and the bow as well. And I'm taking everything out of uh, the pocket labeled five and six. And in my instructions, I'm looking at um, still the last page, but this layout on the right, because we're working our way backwards through all of this. Now, one of the things I did is took one of the bags and I actually got rid of the seams and opened it up. Let me grab my trimmer. So we have a bottom seam of the bag. You just want to put it in the trimmer so that the seam is on the right and just take off a smidge. And that has it about seven inches almost exactly. <laughs> Then let's place the bag in the trimmer so that the seam is on the bottom, or on, you know, on the trimmer, and the straightest edge is on the top, the jagged edge is on the bottom, and we'll cut off this side seam at around five inches. And then we can literally open the bag and use that on our page. That was easy enough. Of the two pieces of confetti paper that we have here, let's take the one that is the widest and add it to the top edge of the print. And then we're gonna separate by adding a gold. So the pink is on one side, the gold is on the other. I think that's so fun. And I'm gonna separate this with a gold strip. Continuing on, we're going to take the, I don't know, no, I don't care how old I am. I'm going in the bouncy castle and nest that onto the corresponding aqua strip. Look at that, it all fits so nicely. And then the bag is at the bottom of the page. Isn't that sweet? Then take one of the aqua, mats and then the other confetti print which now is going to become a mat that'll go on the right and check this out that aqua mat fits there and as does the cake cut apart fits right on top and if you have a lot of pictures you want to use put pictures in these spaces right on top of the cake it's all fine um i also added a strip of this beautiful ribbon as well as a bow so first i cut a 13 or let's just say a 14 inch piece of this and then I took the ribbon and made my rabbit ears make two rabbit ears okay and then you crisscross the ears and the one that's on top sneaks around through the loop how about that and you've got yourself a really pretty shapeable bow so you can kind of control the length or the size of your bow by just pulling on those ends 
and you've got a really nice looking bow that you can then trim and then attach. And I used a glue line to attach mine and that worked really well. I hope, I hope you like these tips. I mean, I, you can just tell things are kind of glued here so it really works, it really works for the space. Okay, then the rest of the items that came out of pocket five and six will go onto the other blue paper, which is next in your stack. Along the bottom, we'll begin with this other piece of the confetti paper that we trimmed. And then we're going to separate. Just I, I do like to mirror this a little bit and add a lot of balance to the pages. There goes my gold separator. And again, I attach that with bookbinding glue. An aqua mat should fit perfectly with throw confetti, pop champagne, toast to a new day, or for that matter, a new year. Happy New Year, everybody. And two vertical mats here. There's a little journaling prompt, and I'm going to check in my pocket for a little blue piece of paper, and there it is. And there should be just enough of this blue, pretty beautiful blue ribbon here. I like to use my fabric scissors. I'm going to cut it little notch into the top of this and kind of test this. Cut a little notch into the bottom. And that's going to live right behind these adorable little cut aparts. And let's add a final accent to this. These really fun confetti filled crowns. I'll just top that right there. On the finished page, you can see everything attached with glue and I used um, I actually used a glue line for this as well. I found that the plastic just with the glue only worked on two of the three crowns that came in the kit for some reason. All right let's move on to pages three and four. I've got everything out of that pocket for three and four and the yellow this beautiful gorgeous yellow is our base for the layout and then on the on um, the right edge here I'll put just as flush with the edge that beautiful confetti print and then we'll separate our space here with this strip okay then let's add two horizontal pink mats and then beneath the bottom mat just tuck in this adorable journaling prompt and we'll embellish that with one of our cute miniature envelopes just put that right next to it. Now, again, when you're decorating, you could just add a little something in there if you wanted to, a little journaling note or just a little I love you or caption or something for these photos. I think that would be super sweet. And again, we have this portion of this cut apart here. And that can be placed right along flush with this inside or this left edge. And that'll go above the photo mat. You can still add a title or another image or an image right over the top of this, embellishments, whatever you wish. So here is the finished and quite simple layout number four. Nothing wrong with simple every now and then, right, my friends? Okay, then we'll do the yellow base for layout three. Here goes my balancing act again. I'll put the print along the flush with the left edge separated by this other pink strip. Same thing that happened on the right side. Then... Within this space above, look how it fits, just like a puzzle. Mm -mm -mm. Makes me so happy. A vertical mat here will fit nicely with this. Wrap it with some pink ribbon. We have this beautiful pink taffeta. Love this. And what's nice about this too is when you make a bow with it, it doesn't matter. There's no wrong side to this ribbon. And take one of those yellow crowns and place it right there. Now, we've got this nested sentiment here. I'll place that beneath, followed by a pink, a gold, and a pink envelope. And if you want, you can nestle right into that opening. <laughs> this is why we dry fit. In other words, we fit this without adhesive um, in advance. Then we kind of know how we puzzle everything together. Here is that finished layout with the ribbon added. Our three cute little envelopes. Isn't that adorable? I just love this page. Okay, we're already We've arrived at our final two layouts. I have everything out of pocket one and two, and for the base of layout two, we'll be using this adorable uh, small dot print. Let's see here. Let's begin with this adorable uh, plain pink confetti strip, and we'll separate that with a plain pink. This is the paper and not the foil. And then the other strip that says kindness is always beautiful. 
then a vertical pink photo mat. Let's top that off with one of our handmade pinwheels up here. Oh, so sweet. You should have enough pink ribbon if you use it sparingly to top this tag, but you'll notice also that um, the tag fits perfectly onto the aqua mat. So if you want, you can either use a craft knife and cutting mat, or if you'd like with your scissors, you can remove those corners. Yeah, that worked very well. And also punch through that too. This is a good place here once you've topped it with ribbon and you can add, it's just the perfect little home for um, this little crown. Now, when we were putting our, our uh, stuff in, we actually had, check that out, those little pieces that would have been scraps end up being used to create a banner that will function as an anchor for this really sweet quote. Along the left edge of this page, we'll finish with the three photo mats that will fit perfectly film strip style into that area. And here's the finished layout with the ribbon on top, the pinwheel attached. I just use regular ATG adhesive or two-way adhesive or book binding glue will work for that as well. And here's my crown and the little banner, nested banner at the bottom. Now for this last page, I used this really fun dotty stencil. And we have an ink at Club Scraps called Ocean. And we also have these amazing little brush ink applicators. So I'll take the ocean ink and I'll load my brush by rubbing in a circular motion. And then I'll place this sort of at the top. So I'm just off the edges a little bit of my print here, or my plain paper, my plain aqua paper. And I'm just going to, using a round circular motion, I'm not using a tapping motion in this case, just a round circular motion, I will add all of these cute little dots from this stencil to the paper. It only takes, it's just a jiffy, right? So then I'll slide the stencil down and I'm gonna raise it slightly so that I don't, doesn't appear like I'm trying too hard, you know, making an exact pattern. I'll avoid the three punch holes in the stencil and just finish applying this all the way across the page. Now, if you'd like, you could go all the way down. You could just repeat this any way you wish, but I'm ending up using just this top, and unfortunately, a lot of it gets covered by this really fun um, cut apart, but you can still see the flow of that confetti going from the top to the bottom. Let's add some differentiation of color by adding the pink side up, the strips of foil here above and below this cut apart. Positioning of that will be determined when we place our two vertical pink mats here at the bottom, followed by nesting with these guys. This long strip will fit underneath here, going across to add a little bit of anchoring help. And we can top that with the sparkle and finish with three, a set of three little pinwheels. And here is the finished layout with everything glued down. Once again, bookbinding glue used to keep this. Of course, I also relied on the help of my grid ruler to make sure everything was nice and level and straight before I stuck it down. Wow, a little bit more involved with making of the pinwheels and the envelopes, but I think it was worth incorporating some fun projects that can be done with the foil. And um, we do have more of these two colors in stock in that um, beautiful pink and then also the turquoise that's included in the card kit. If you're interested in playing with this further, check it out with your die cutting. It's gonna be a lot of fun to work with. Well, as always, thanks for joining me. We'll see you back here again next month with July's turquoise kit. Happy New Year.